What are you experiencing, John? What can you say for absolutely sure is your experience? What is absolutely verifiable and indisputable about me talking to you right now? That it's happening. It's indisputable. Well, no, not really. I don't know. You know that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Do you get my question? Well, I don't, like it could be a dream. So I don't know that it's not a dream. Like, I can't prove that at least. But what's your actual experience? That you're talking to me. Hmm. Is that your actual experience? Yeah, I experience the thought that <laughs> you're talking to me. Oh, cool. And without that thought, can you say for sure that I'm talking to you? That that's happening? No. I mean, I could convince anyone that you are talking to me, but I don't think. But what's your actual experience? Is that I'm perceiving you talking to me. What's your actual experience, though? That, that's still assumption. That's a thought. Then my actual experience is just that I exist, that I'm here mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. having thoughts. And what's your actual experience before that? Before existing? Before that experience. Of I exist. If you see it as almost like distance, like you can go farther out or you can go closer in or closer backwards. So on the surface or out there, you could say, I'm talking to you. But then when you look closer, your actual direct experience does not consist of me talking to you. It's only when you go out thinking about that 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 becomes an apparent reality, right? So then also that I exist is out there. Well, I'm asking you, what's your experience? Yeah, experience that I exist. Mm -hmm. I experience that I exist. Cool. And before that? I just am not experiencing <laughs> that right now. Interesting. It's like only in deep meditation that I experience before that, before mm -hmm. I exist. Like you're aware that you But aren't you experiencing, experiencing? Okay. So isn't experiencing still in front of you? Yeah. Do you always experience that you're experiencing? Mm-hmm. Consciously? No. And what about in deep sleep? No. Not consciously. Mm -hmm. I don't. So what's you? It's just not here at all. It's not here at all. Where is it? It's just not here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Uh huh. But it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. Dennis. Was a question. Did you get anything from this? Yeah. What did you get? First thing, if I don't go out. If you what? If I don't go out. 
Yes. I'm not experiencing you. Nice. Or your question. That's or... cool, no? Can you see that very tangibly? Yeah. So do you see that everything that you think you're experiencing is to some degree an assumption? Maybe maybe entirely. Assumption my choice. It's inferred. You know? It's assumed. It's believed. But there if you go to your actual direct experience, you find no evidence of what you just described, right? Even while I'm talking to you, in your actual direct experience, you find no evidence that I'm talking to you. Can you see that? Yeah. Right. So it's just a good little thing to remind yourself of, because you're always in this world experience, or so you think. And it just takes a moment to remember that it's not actually your experience at all. It's a complete assumption. And it's liberating. And then you, you can go even further back, which I was trying with Corey. And I like, I understand her answer when she says, it's just not here. I can't say where it is, but it's not here. It's not this. So it takes practice to kind of retrace your steps and get as close back to the truth of what you are. And there's many ways to do this, but uh, one is to just ask yourself, is that actually the case? Am I actually experiencing a book on the table? Is that actually my experience or am I projecting that with my assumptions and my thoughts. If I stop these assumptions and these thoughts and these projections, what's my act, what's left? And then typically you get to some degree of purity of the I am or being or beingness, as you said, or experiencing, oh, these are all synonymous or awareness. So that's great because then you're like, you're about halfway <laughs> to what you are, so to speak. It's that pivot point. So if you if you can make that as reliable as you experiencing me speaking or this book on the table, if you can make that sort of disappear in a sense, doesn't mean you change anything. It just means you realize that your direct experience does not consist of a book on the table. It consists of being. It consists of awareness. It consists of I am. And if you can abide in that more, it doesn't have to be all the time, but at least be able to make that more bright, more vivid. Now you have a platform just like you have with me speaking or this room, your body sitting in this room experience, which is not your direct experience. If again, if you look very closely at what you're actually directly experiencing, it's not a body sitting in a room. You need to go out of yourself to have that experience or apparently have that experience. And then you begin to investigate it and you see it's nothing but a bunch of thoughts or assumptions. The, project, the thoughts are projecting the things. At first, it sounds kind of like, oh, maybe cool, maybe weird. But when you start doing it more rigorously, it becomes as real as the book on the table. Right? I'd have to say it more real. That distinction between I am and the world, the I am becomes more real than the world because you really start to see through the thoughts into the fact that your direct experience is continuously undistracted already. Your experience of being is always there. It's the foundation of any other perception, of any other thought. So once you have that a little bit more, then you can inquire further and begin to get a real sense of your actual self, which is even more direct, more prior than the experience of beingness, because beingness is also something you refer to, that you depend on, that you project. But again, this is a two, two step jump. It's not a one step jump, typically, or actually all the time, as far as I've discovered. The other way that I, I'm not sure if I shared it here in the mentorship group, but well, I'm sure I shared it in the mentorship group, but it's just to continue the inquiry. What is what is self and what's not self as you're just scanning your experience, you're just scanning the present moment. Some call it mindfulness. And in that mindfulness of scanning the present moment, there's some thoughts, some I can see some color, but you notice 
in order for you to experience the color of the couch, you need to exit your direct experience. You need to enter an assumption. You're projecting already. If you can develop a visceral sense of that you're actually leaving your beingness, not technically, but it feels like that, because all that is too, the beingness. But in order for me to really believe that I'm experiencing the color of the couch, I have to leave my awareness of myself as I am. If you can develop a sense for that distinction, that pivoting back and forth, that's a great tool already. And then you can begin to just investigate as you're scanning your experience, it becomes purer and purer, less and less assumptions will project less and less objects. And therefore, you're becoming transparent to that formless background of I am, that mysterious quality of God, and becomes more palpable. It's like you can taste it, you can feel it, you are it. And then it becomes easier to ask yourself the question, what is me and what's not me? What's actually self and what's not self? And it's like a knife cutting through assumptions every time you ask that. Because on automatic pilot, you're lost in your perceptions and your thoughts and your assumptions. But then when you ask yourself, oh, let me just pause for a few seconds. What is actually the self? What's actually self or me? or M, and what is not. Then instantly you'll get a sense of, like everybody, and practice makes perfect, but even in the beginning, you'll get a sense of like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that which I'm projecting over here. I'm something deeper, I'm, some, I'm something that's closer to here. And of course, we use the body as a reference point, but that too, at some point you see that, in order to experience the body, it's just as much a projection as experiencing the couch or the mountain or the sunrise. Because in your direct experience, you don't have a body. It needs that power of consciousness to project in order for you to experience that level of consciousness, of the illusion. But before you do that, actually your experience is just a being. And it's not just being, I mean, it's a grand, it's awesome. And the deeper, the purer you make it, the more free and empty and vast it becomes. It already is that, but you become aware of it in that way. So you're purifying your awareness of being through these practices. And that will answer so many questions. In fact, it will remove most of your questions because it is the answer to all questions. It is the ocean where all the raindrops and the mountain streams and the glaciers end up and all the questions end in I am. It's just a matter of, are you satisfied with being or not? And the purer you make your recognition of being, the more satisfying it'll become. And the more you struggle projecting out there, the more satisfying being will become in contrast to that. That's the purpose of suffering, purpose of contrast, right? It's how we mature. That's why suffering is so important. And then again, you can apply it to even beingness and see like, fuck. Maybe even the beingness is some kind of primordial, subtle projection. And then what is me? If I'm not the beingness, then what is I? Because I do exist. I can't dispute that there is something here. There is an existence. That's all I cannot dispute. But what form that has, what shape, what feeling, what sensation, what label that has is absolutely up for grabs, up for questioning, is optional. The fact that there is some kind of existence, otherwise there would be no experience, there would be no illusion, there would be no projections, there would be no descriptions, and there also would not be the feeling or awareness that I exist. So clearly something exists. You could call that the one infinite creator if you want, you can call it source, you can call it life. But then even that subtle experience of just pure experiencing, pure being, you can begin to recognize that that too is a, an object of perception and who is perceiving the I am, who is witnessing, to whom does the I am happen, to whom does beingness occur, who is aware of the beingness. Not the thought beingness, the actual beingness that seems like really real compared to to our thoughts. In comparison to our thoughts, the I am seems really real. But then in comparison to ourselves, 
the I am also shows its illusory nature. Because what is I am? Are you actually, is your direct experience of yourself I am? Or are you experiencing I am? And if you are experiencing I am, then what is you? And there is no answer for this. It is indescribable. But you can stay right there at that threshold and get a glimpse, at least, of that infinite beyondness that is somehow the source of all manifestation, of all beings, of all perception.